Guys, it is finally here. We have our Jar Jar Binks kit. I'm actually at work right now. I was driving from one place to the other and my Discord kept getting spammed, uh, popped out of the car. Of course, that's the way that it always happens. Uh, I can't wait till tomorrow morning. So I'm holed up in my creepy office that everybody says, hey, you need a better background, right? But I don't care. Uh, I need to do this today. I have not looked at the kit yet. Uh, I just kind of want to go through, see what it is, get my reaction, and uh, we'll, we'll do that together. But first things first, I have not updated anybody on my Gungans and where they are at this moment. So based on, uh, as of actually this morning officially, I have all of my Gungans at R5 for the event. I have all of the Omicrons except for the Phalanx, who I'm choosing to ignore um, and not do just because I set, think it sets a really bad precedent. Um, and I do have all of the materials to take every single one of them, including Jar Jar, to R9 right after doing the event. Uh, and we did that together, so that's kind of awesome. With that said, let's check this out and see how this is going. Kit reveal for Jar Darth Jar Jar Binks. Light side support Gungan. Now the interesting thing here is that I actually did expect him to get the Galactic Republic tag and have some kind of weird synergy with Padme or Queen Amidala in like a 3v3 team or uh, in just kind of like an off meta type of team or one of those like little uh, nods, but I, I guess it makes sense that we're just gonna be Gungans. Jar Jar Binks cranks the dial to 11 and elevates the rest of the Gungan team. Small random chance for something extreme to happen with any ability. Our art team really knocked it out of the park with this one. Sound on. Oh boy. Specializes in disrupting and frustrating the enemy so the other four Gungans can do their thing. Inspiration. Jar Jar Binks has always brought to the screen his own special kind of chaos and blind luck. We found inspiration here by having Jar Jar gain blind whenever he would gain foresight. We wanted to recreate those moments where Jar Jar's actions can lead to unintentional benefits, so we added the long shot moments that happen very uh, rarely to each of his activated abilities. His animations are inspired by his actions at the battle for, the, for Naboo, including getting a battle droid stuck to his foot, blasting random enemies, love it. Strategy tips. Using Wisa Warriors to lock in the debility, debilitating debuffs from Gungan allies can swing a battle. Capitalize on Plasma Residue by inflicting shock. Can deal extra damage to all those with Plasma Residue. All his active abilities can hit multiple targets, but if he happens to miss an attack on his turn, his Gungan allies pick up the slack. Uh, FAQ, let's see, his event begins next Thursday, kind of sucks, I was super excited for it to be um, this week, because I, I did have Thursday off, uh, and it's interesting, it's going to last for a week, okay, what is required to unlock him, four Gungans at Relic 5, Omicrons are GAC, that's what we expected, will Jar Jar be good in the upcoming Naboo raid, yes, very much yes, why can I not select Jar Jar for Boomadir's Horn of Otagunga? Jar Jar can't assist, so he can't be a target ally for Boomadir. Interesting. The increased chance for the long shot to happen on his abilities, does this require the entire enemy side to be Separatist? No, the increased odds occur if even a single Separatist is present on the other side of the battle when the ability is activated. So Django just being present on a Mandalorian team will make them susceptible to the better odds of long shot occurring. Does the Separatist need to be active at the moment the ability is activated? Yes. Okay, so we got How Wood is our basic ability. <laughs> Again, we got those giant blue balls flying through the air, but uh, I, I like the trip that we got going on. Deal special damage to all enemies. On his turn, one of three effects will occur. Inflect inflict death mark for one turn to the healthiest enemy which can't be resisted if they have at least three debuffs the weakest gungan ally gains damage immunity for one turn and gungan allies gain tenacity up for one turn additionally this attack has a 0.01 percent chance to instantly defeat a random enemy which can't be ev evaded increased to one percent if there are any separatist enemies this en uh, attack can't be countered so at 1%, we're looking at a 1 in 100 chance of that happen. It's something that's, it is going to turn the tide of battle, but, you know, it's it's not something that we're going to be able to count on. 0.1%, um, I guess, is 1 in 10,000 chance. 
Special one. Uh-oh, big boomas. Probably some more big blue balls, right? Yep. Deal special damage to all enemies. If target enemy had protection, stun the enemy for one turn. Uh, otherwise, inflict them with three stacks of expose for one turn. 0.01% chance all enemies lose all turn meter are in, and are inflicted with fear for one turn, which can't be copied, dispelled, prevented, or resisted. Increased to 1% chance if there's a separatist. If all allies are Gungans, all enemies are inflicted with plasma residue for one turn, which can't be copied. Plasma residue, this character loses 100% evasion. Love it. If this character becomes inflicted with shock, deal reduced massive damage to all enemies with plasma residue, then remove all instances of plasma residue. While in Grand Arena, so I'm assuming this is the uh, Omicron portion of this, and all allies are Gungans, dispel bonus protection and protection up on all enemies, and they lose 5% max health and max protection, which can't be evaded for the rest, the rest of the encounter, then inflict the target enemy with protection disruption for one turn. Plasma Residue can't be resisted whenever this ability is used. Reduce the cooldown of all other Gun Gungan ally abilities by one. That's insane. Like, truly, truly, truly insane. Wiso Warriors. Uh. <laughs> That's like something out of like a WWE game. That's great. Uh, deal special damage to target enemy and a random enemy. Gungan allies recover 10% protection. 0.01% chance all Gungan allies recover 100% health and protection and gain 100% turn meter and foresight for two turns. Increase to 1% chance if there are any separatist enemies. If all allies are Gungan, excluding summoned allies, for each different debuff on target enemy or random enemy that, enemy that could be copied and dispelled, that debuff is dispelled and inflicted on that enemy for one turn. Wait. So for each different debuff on target enemy or random enemy that could be copied and dispelled, that debuff is dispelled and inflicted on that enemy for one turn. So I guess it just applies a locked buff. These are uh, locked debuff. These debuffs can't be dispelled or resisted. All enemies are inflicted with two stacks of frustration for one turn, which can't be copied. Frustration, detrimental effects, build based on cumulative, no cumulative numbers of stacks, can't assist or counter. So it's kind of like confusion. Whenever this character gains bonus turn meter, remove two stacks of recharge from enemy shield generator and expose the character for two turns. Special abilities are unusable for one attack. Remove all stacks of frustration after this attack. A uh, unique one, Misa Oki Day. It's got a Zeta and an Omicron. At the start of battle, Jar Jar loses 75% health, gains as much as protection. Uh, at the start of the battle, Jar Jar is inflicted with death mark until he receives damage or evades an attack. If the enemy leader is separatist at the start of the encounter, Jar Jar gains 50 speed for the rest of the encounter. Jar Jar debuffs can't be evaded and he can't be called to assist. So he doesn't really need potency at all, right? So we're probably looking at speed and, and something else. Speed and health, speed, well, you, there's no protection sets, probably speed and health, uh, or maybe tenacity. Whenever another character gains foresight, Jar Jar gains foresight for one turn. Whenever Jar Jar gains foresp some foresight, he dispels it and blinds himself instead for one turn. Whenever Jar Jar evades a basic ability, that enemy missed is inflicted with a stack of frustration. That enemy that missed is inflicted with a stack of frustration at the start of their next turn, which can't be copied or resisted. Whenever an enemy dazes, staggers, or stuns a Gungan, death mark Jar Jar until he receives damage or evades an attack. Okay, so that's interesting. If there is an active ally shield generator, Jar Jar has 1,000% evasion. That's insane. I... Wow. Whenever a character gains bonus turn meter, Jar Jar has a 1% chance of gaining a bonus turn. Increased to 10% if it is an enemy. Jar Jar's a... Wow. Oh, man. Whenever this effect occurs, Jar Jar can't gain another bonus turn for, from this ability for two turns. While in Grand Arena and all allies are Gungan, 
Whenever the shield generator uses Plasma Pulse, reset all of Jar Jar's cooldowns. Whenever a Gungan ally is dazed, staggered, or stunned, they dispel it and gain shield up 25% for two turns. Uh, moi moi, I, moi moi, I love you. Zeta and Omicron. Gungan allies have 75% accuracy. If the enemy leader is Separatist at the start of the encounter, on all Gungan allies gain 50% max protection until the end of the encounter, or Jar Jar is defeated for the first time. At the start of his first turn, if there are no Galactic Legends, all enemies are inflicted with a stack of frustration for one turn, increased to three if they are stealth, which can't be resisted. If different enemies take consecutive turns, a random Gungan ally gains a bonus. If if different enemies take consecutive turns, a random Gungan ally gains a bonus turn. Whenever Jar Jar misses an attack on his turn, all other Gungan allies assist. Oh, dealing 50% less damage. Whenever the ally should generate uses Plasma Pulse, Gungan allies ignore protection for one attack. Oh, this is beautiful. If there's an active ally shield generator, Gungan allies can't drop below 100% health while they have protection and can't be instantly defeated. Oh my god. Uh, while in Grand Arena, at the start of his first turn, the allied shield generator gains two stacks of plasma shielding for every three relic amplifier levels Jar Jar has. Whenever a non-Gungan enemy gains damage immunity, all Gungan allies gain damage gain damage immunity for one turn. Whenever a Gungan ally gains a bonus turn from this ability, they gain 5% mastery until the end of the turn. Uh, okay. Meathead, I like this. Your art uh, is nice today. Uh, da, 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 da. I like that. I like that. So it seems like, I mean, I have all of the other kits kind of up here, but I, I think we get the kind of the basic gist. Um, basically, we're saying that Jar Jar is really, really squishy because he's going to have death mark up a lot. However, uh, he's got a thousand percent evasion, and if the shield generator drops, um, you've kind of lost at that point anyway. So it's really unlikely that the other team is even going to hit him. Um, and you, I guess, want him to miss, right? Because every time he misses and he gets that blind, uh, everybody on the team is going to be hitting with their basics. There's a lot of turn meter kind of floating around here. There's a lot of different status effects uh, floating around in this kit. I could see this, I mean, in GAC right now, taking out anything that's not, um, on offense at least, anything that's not a GL. But I I'm starting to think, like, maybe... <sighs> Maybe even some of these GL teams, these guys are going to destroy. Uh, the one thing we were worried about was like Ben Solo being able to take, uh, reduce their protect, uh, go past their protection um, with his Omicron and GL GAC. But it doesn't seem like he's going to be able to do that at all. And that attack is going to be completely uh, null and void. This is honestly insane uh for territory battles i can see this autoing even the day five and day six planets which i'm really excited for um i i, I don't even know what like this is this is crazy it, it's it's all over the place it's beautiful i love it they don't really need accuracy um they've got bonus turn like that's a thousand percent evasion so you really need something that forces you to hit him but again you need to destroy the shield generator right the, the team falls apart if we destroy the the shield generator um and it, it it looks like we're gonna make that really really hard to do uh every three relic levels so two four for me that'll be six additional stacks on the shield generator Death mark Jar Jar until he receives damage or evades an attack whenever an enemy. And that death mark, if I remember correctly, we're just going to pull this up. Death mark, Star Wars Magic Heroes. Does that force me to attack them? I think it does. Enemies will target this unit. So you're basically. See, okay, so here's what I'm going to say. I did a kit for Jar Jar a long time ago, and I talked about what Jar Jar should be. And basically what I said is he should be a support, but he should also tank, right? And that looks like what this is. That's what's going to happen here. He's kind of like an evasion tank. 
Um, and you don't want to hit him, but the game is forcing you to hit him, which is which is beautiful. This is exactly what I kind of predicted years ago. Um, I'm super I'm super pumped about this. It looks like again the, the event's only a month. Uh, uh, sorry, the event's only a week long, but I think it's going to be uh, a monthly event like Bolkatan. I don't think it's been said yet. I don't think anyone's given us notice on that yet. Uh, that's the wrong kit. Um, but but that's what it looks like.